If you're a teacher, you probably don't want to give your students and parents your personal phone number. However, it can be handy if they can call you and text you when you're not in the classroom. The way I solve that problem is by having a Google Voice number. And that's a number that I can allow to forward to my cell phone and I can turn it off when I don't want it to forward to my cell phone. And it protects my personal number, so I keep my personal number private. So I'm going to show you how to set one of those up today. You can go straight to the Google Voice address, which is voice.google.com, or you can run a Google search for Google Voice and find the address that way. I'll be showing you how to set this up on the web. And from the web, you can make phone calls from your computer or from your phone. You can also send texts straight from your computer. Um, and you can set it up to receive texts that you will be able to read on your computer or on your phone as you choose. All right, once you've reached this point, go ahead and press continue. You're going to choose your local area. How did that happen? If you get bumped out of that screen like I just did, you can get back there by going to the gear at the top right to get to your settings. And it'll take you to the first tab, which is the account. And then you're going to choose a Google Voice number. And it gets us right back where we were again. So I'm going to choose my city, choose a number that's available and that I like. Now I need to add a phone number and verify that I have access to that number. You can either put in a cell phone number here and they will send you a text message or you can verify with a phone that you have access to by voice, and then you'll need to enter the code that they send you in the message. All right, once you have your Google Voice number, take a look at what you have. You have calls, messages, and voicemail. Your calls can be set up to come in on the computer only, or they can also be forwarded to a phone of your choice. Your messages can be set up to come in on the computer only, or they can be set up to forward to the phone of your choice and your voicemails um, can be set up to be accessible on your computer only or you can also access them from your phone. Let's set up some important settings before we do anything else. So go back to the gear at the top right and we're going to scroll down to messages and choose whether or not you would like to forward your messages to your linked number this is off this is on if you would like to forward messages to your email choose that option here and then let's scroll down again you have the option for calls always use my phone to place calls if you would prefer to use your computer to place calls then leave this option off if you would prefer to use your phone turn this option on and when you place a call Google Voice will first call your phone and then the call will be completed to the person that you dialed. You could choose to use anonymous caller ID however then you will look like any other telemarketer so I recommend leaving that off so parents can identify you. Call forwarding when someone calls your 
Google Voice number, this is the number that will receive the phone call. If you would like to receive the phone call on a device other than your computer. So if you do not want to receive phone calls on another device, simply turn this off and you can answer the phone calls on your computer only or turn this on and the calls will be forwarded to the phone of your choice. A particularly helpful option in Google Voice is show my Google Voice number as caller ID when forwarding calls. This helps you know the difference between a parent calling whose phone number you don't know and a telemarketer calling. So instead of seeing the parent's phone number, which you might not know, you will see your own Google Voice number and that way you can guess that it is more likely a parent than a telemarketer. So I recommend turning this option on so that you can recognize a parent phone call when you see one coming in. And the very important do not disturb setting. When you need hours off, whether you have your phone uh, forwarded just during your work hours or whether you have do not disturb for evening hours, dinner hours, or lunch hours. Turn do not disturb on when you do not wish to receive notifications from Google Voice. And turn do not disturb off again when you are ready to receive calls and messages from Google Voice again. There's one more very important setting to go over before we go back to our tour of how to use Google Voice and that is under voicemail. In addition to the obvious setting up your voicemail, um, there is this setting let Google analyze voicemail transcripts. Um, I have opted not to allow this option because it involves information about my students. So to protect their privacy, I make sure that that option is off. And there are many more options that you can look at and modify. And you can get to all of those by clicking on the settings gear again and explore them. Now, how to use Google Voice. To make a phone call, just click over here on the right hand side where it says call as and has your Google Voice number. Type in the number you want to call and press the call button. And now you're calling. If you would like to send a text message, click on messages. Click on send a new message and here in the center of your screen you will see a two space appear. Type in the number or choose the contact that you would like to send a message to. And then either press enter to complete the phone number or click on the phone number. Click down at the bottom where it says type a message. Type and send. You see you can add emojis, add images, click on the green arrow to send your message, and off it goes. Over here you can select messages. You can unselect messages. Here you have archive as an option. There was an option to delete messages, however that option is now gone. Not sure if it's gone forever or just gone for the moment. Perhaps it will return, perhaps it will not. Down here we have voice messages. You can click on a voice message. You can, down here at the bottom, play the voice message. You can also see a rough transcript of the message here. The transcripts are not perfect or even close to perfect, but often if you um, glance at it, you can get a rough idea of at least who might be calling, which is helpful sometimes. And I hope that you find this helpful in getting set up as we all face distance learning, many of us for the first time.